In this tutorial, we're going to be learning capacity management, discharging a patient. We're going to be covering requesting a discharge, starting a discharge, dispatching transport to discharge a patient. Now we're going to go ahead and log in. You use your username and password here. When capacity management opens up, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to navigate our way to the unit that we're working on today. Today I'm going to work on the surgical unit. So I'm going to go to floor six. And once I'm on floor six, I'm going to drill a little further down to surgical. You'll see that we have all of our surgical beds and patients listed in our patients list. We know that one of our patients can potentially be discharged today. So we're going to request a discharge on this patient. I'm going to select test Michaels as my patient. I'm going to click on the left hand column. I'm going to go to discharge and then discharge patient. At this point, we've requested a discharge. It's a pending discharge, and it will depend on whether or not the patient will actually get discharged. To be able to view the progress of this discharge, we're going to go over to our bed management perspective. We're going to click on discharge list, and then we're going to scroll down this list to find our patient. We found Tess Michaels right here. You can see over here that there is no discharge to this location. There's no start time and there's no depart time. At this point, this is just a pending discharge. When we know that the patient's actually going to get discharged, we come to our discharge list. We click on the left-hand column next to our patient. We'll come down, and then we're going to click Start Discharge. You'll see that the start time has been populated. The status has been set to started. And at this point, we can continue to chart on this patient. We can start going through our discharge instructions. When the patient's ready to leave, we're going to come over to this left-hand side of the left-hand column. We're going to go down to Discharge, and we're going to select Discharge Transport. The Request Discharge Transport dialog pops up, and you'll see that in the From, it's from the bed that our patient's currently at. The second field, it'll give you a little four-option window. You can discharge them to the South Link or the South Parking Garage, to the ED Valet, or if the patient has special instructions on where they need to be discharged to, you can select Per Patient. If you select Per Patient, you need to put details about that patient and where they're going to be discharged to in the transport details. I'm just going to select South Parking Garage. Down below, you're also going to see a couple commonly used transport details. The patient's in a wheelchair, you can select that without having to type it into the actual details box. Once we're done with all that, we're going to click OK. You'll see down here in our discharge list that Tess Michaels now has a discharge to location, the South Parking Garage. The transport will receive this job, they'll be loaded into their queue, they'll accept the job. And then when they come up to pick up the patient, they'll start the job. And then as soon as the patient's been dropped off on the South Parking Garage, they'll complete the job. And then the patient status will change from started to patient departed. The patient depart time will be populated. The patient will remain in this list until they've actually been fully discharged from Millennium. So once that order has been put in, they'll fall off this list. As soon as that occurs, the patient will also need to be discharged in STAR.